Sesame Street. So here we are at beautiful Kaufman Astoria Studios in Queens, New York, where we happen to tape Sesame Street every season. Uh, in this place here, we've been uh, a little over 20 years, uh, so it's been sort of home for Sesame Street for that long. Every year we come here. When I got the job for Sesame Street, uh, I had never been uh, east of the Mississippi. Uh, first time in New York, and it was uh, quite an experience uh, coming from the West and a totally different planet out there. And I showed up in New York, and uh, you know, I had a, I was a blooming young actor, and I had a job on television, which was quite exciting. When I showed up here, they told me that I had the part of Luis, but uh, I didn't really know who Luis was supposed to be or, you know, what he did on the show. They had a fix-it shop that he ran. I showed up, and sure enough, I, you know, hit the ground running with that. Oh, buenos dias, Pedro! Luis, the name is Luis. Oh, see, si, see, si, Luis Seguro. <laughs> Nowadays, of course, there's no fix-it shops anywhere. <laughs> I mean, something breaks, you just throw it out and you buy a new one. Made in China, there it is, you know. But uh, in those years, this is like 40-something uh, years ago, the neighborhoods were a little bit different in, in New York, uh, especially. I mean, you could walk out the door and each block uh, in the neighborhood had butcher, the grocery store, they had where you could fix your shoes, you had the fix-it shop where if something broke, say your toaster broke, hey, take it to Luis, there it is. And Luis would fix it for you and you have your toaster the next day. That gave it the feel of the neighborhood on Sesame Street. Ah. Agua. Te veo. Venga. It's great to speak two languages, cause it's great to spend your days saying twice as much as others do in twice as many ways. When you can speak two languages, why settle just for one? By using only one of them, you just have half the fun. How long have Latinos been trying to work and succeed in show business here in the United States? When I was starting out in uh, Los Angeles nice back in the 60s, there wasn't too much opportunity for uh, up-and-coming young actors and actresses of Latino descent. Uh, at that time, there were a few people that were already established, like Ricardo Montalban and Anthony Quinn and Cesar Romero. Those people had been around for quite some time now. But uh, starting when I was just starting out back in 1965 or 66, there was not too many opportunities for someone to just kind of jump into Hollywood uh, as an actor or actress. Did you say None? Yeah, that's right. I don't want to give her any rotten fish. Uh, excuse me, Oscar. I, I, I think I forgot to water my bicycle. Water your bicycle? What do you mean? Hey, come back here. You gotta help me figure this out. Whoa, who are you? I am Senor Zero. When you have none of something, you call it Zero. Uh, a lot of the parts that were available then were just sort of menial parts, janitors, sleepy Mexicans under the uh, cactus tree, and uh, prostitutes, gang members, all those nasty stereotypes, <laughs> which, uh, I mean, they still persist, believe me, to this day. However, now, after all these years, there probably has been, you know, quite a change in terms of Latinos and Latinas working in uh, television and film. There are a lot of more of us working now than there were then in bigger parts, starring parts, non-stereotypical parts. My special place 
meant for me alone Oh, how I've missed you now that I have grown I can truthfully say that uh, overtly I have never experienced discrimination because of my ethnicity. I mean, overtly, right? I go back a long time as an actor, uh, working both in Los Angeles and New York. However, uh, when you look at the big picture of the whole thing, yes, I think that uh, racism is part of the discrimination in terms of uh, Latinos and Latinas in the media. Uh, in film and in television. A large portion of the Latinos and Latinas in this country are native-born Americans and we speak English just like everybody else. You know, some of us may be bilingual as myself and uh, millions of others, but we're Americans and uh, we were born here, we've We've grown up here, been educated here, we have our families here. So we're a part of the culture. However, because of the, uh, the stereotypical considerations of uh, some of the people in the industries of uh, film and television, they, they may think that uh, because there's a large immigrant population that uh, incurs into the United States, that, uh, that all of us only speak Spanish and none of us speak English. As a matter of fact, we Mexican-Americans were here even before it was the United States of America. It's been a long ride in terms of being an actor uh, on, in television and in film. I've been, you know, very much a part of, of the consciousness of trying to change the stereotypes of Latinos uh, in the media. To this day, I think it continues because the very low percentage of uh, Latino representation in the film industry and television industry commensurate to the population. Now, um, that's something, of course, that has to change. We have to uh, continue to uh, make people aware. What needs to change is that we should be represented more uh, in leading parts. The auditions that I've gone on uh, and that I've got parts that I have gotten uh, they were, you know, Latinos and, and other people that, that were ethnic, and I worked in those parts. So, in a way, being Latino has helped me as an actor here in New York because of, there's a lot of content for Latinos. Uh, the one thing that, uh, that I refuse to do and don't want to do is, is to play any parts that are you know, drug-related or gang-related, murderers and, and people like that. I'd rather represent Latinos in a, in a different light. And this is why I think it's important that I got the part of Luis on Sesame Street. Now, Luis is a regular person, regular person on, on the street in the neighborhood on Sesame Street. You know, he's a, he's a, a family man, he's a hard-working individual, he's part of the community, he's got friends, he, he's friendly to everyone. So that is an aspect of the Latinos that really exists and I, I've been happy to be able to represent that to everyone especially to the young kids growing up because that particular image of Latinos, the good image of Latinos will compensate other negative stereotypes that have been promulgated over the years and there have been a lot of them. I'm proud of the fact that I am representing a positive aspect of being a Latino. Speaking two languages makes speaking twice as nice. Speaking two languages makes speaking twice as nice. Twice as nice. It will progress. It has to. There's there's a lot of us here and uh, I, I see now all the young people coming up and uh, very talented uh, actors and actresses and performers and writers and you know all kinds of artists coming up in this country that will be representing all Latinos in film and television and uh, succeeding. So eventually yes we foresee that they will have great success. Here goes another one, eh? I say me gustas, that means I like you. I say hola, that means hi. I say que tal, that means how are you. I say adios, that means goodbye. That's drumming. <laughs>
Here it goes. Salí caminando, caminando me fui. Me encontré dos ovejas cantando así. Me encontré dos ovejas bailando así. As I walked in the country one day by chance, all the sheep in the meadow were doing a dance. All the sheep in the meadow were doing a dance. And they were singing. 